culture. I remember when I was younger, my friends were starting to try marijuana and stuff, and they would offer me some, and I would think, no, you know, if my mother ever caught me doing that, I would get a beating, or um, I was just afraid to try it. So I don't really think that, I don't know that my life would have led in that direction. But again, I never know, you know, peer pressure is a strong thing. Who knows, maybe eventually I would have wanted to try some of that stuff too, and my life would have taken a different turn. So I'll never know, but it does raise the interesting question, seeing what happened to Lamont, what happened to Eric. And I think it took Eric years, you know, I bumped into a mutual friend of ours, and she told me, like, you know, he's now got a family and he's happy and stuff. But then it took him a good 15 years being in and out of drug programs before he finally got his life together. So, you know, most of my friends kind of went on to lead those kind of lives. So it just it raises an interesting question about what my future would have been or could have been. Well, who knows? You know, I could have also gone on and been uh, the next LeBron James or the next... Uh, <laughs> The next uh, Will Smith or something. Samuel Glover. Samuel, exactly. Samuel Glover. Who probably a lot of these people don't even know. Samuel. He's a famous <laughs> tap dancer. Oh, he's great. I don't know if you ever saw it. Bring in the noise, bring in the funk. Anybody ever see that? Uh -huh. the show? Yeah. Yeah. Go home on YouTube. His tap is he's, ridiculous. He's a genius tap dancer. And from the age of like, when he was like, I want to say 12 or 13, he just had this genius ability to tap dance. He did a show on Broadway with Gregory Hines. Um, he choreographed his own show, won a Tony Award. And it was so, you know, who knows, I could have gone on and do something like that. It's, it's, it, I'll never know, but uh, like I mentioned in the books, I try not to live my life in, in what ifs, because that'll drive you crazy if you're always thinking, what if this would have happened? What if that would have happened? What if I didn't stop to play that video game? What if I didn't, you know, what if I had been walking on the left side of the street and Eric had been walking on the right side of the street and he got shot instead of me? Um, it's the kind of thing that could drive you crazy if you think about it too much. Anybody else? Yes. Ah, <laughs> it's a good question. What does my family think about the book? So, it's a very funny point, um, a very funny thing to talk about. My mother liked the book, um, found it powerful. Actually, she actually learned some things about me that she didn't know about me, things I never talked about. It was kind of funny, you know, my family, we were wonderful, you know, we had some good times, but we weren't the most talkative family. We didn't share feelings and stuff. Like, you know, we didn't sit down and say, you know, that, that I see a lot of families doing today. We didn't have, like, a good language to sit down and talk about things. And so we never really sat down and said, hey, I want to talk about what happened here, why, how I felt, how this made me feel. We never talked about stuff. So my mother actually learned a lot of things about me years later. And there were parts of the book that she wishes I didn't talk about. Like, she wishes I didn't bring up the incident with my father that was kind of a disturbing incident. She wishes I didn't talk about my grandmother so much. You know, my grandmother's an alcoholic, and she was a very negative person to be around. And I talk about the effect that that had on me as well. Um, she wishes that, but, but at the same time, she understands. She said, hey, I understand you're an adult, you're an artist, you have to write about, this is how you deal with stuff. And so she, she was actually very, very, she came to be fond of the book. My sister, on the other hand, um, thinks that there were things that I should have kept in the family, things I shouldn't have talked about. She doesn't really appreciate the fact that I shared so much of our life with the public. Um, she wishes I didn't do it. And then I think also there's a part of her that thinks also, you know, why are you talking about yourself? I went through the most difficult thing out of, out of all of us. So, you know, I don't think you should be the one up there, you know, getting all the praise. Um, so it's kind of funny, they both had different reactions. Um, We've also laughed about it. My sister and I, we also laughed about it. We laughed about some of the things that we talk about. I talk about some memories with her that I had of us going to a, a summer place where we were living in the country because his family took us in and uh, allowed us into their home. And we laugh about that. But um, there's a strong part of my sister that thinks that I shouldn't have opened it up as much as I did to the public and talked about some of the things I talked about. But I have no regrets. I feel like... Uh, books, I was honest about everything that I went through and everything I felt, and I think that when I'm reading another person's story of their life, I appreciate when they're honest with me, that's when I learn the most, it's when I feel like uh, uh, the place to possibly learn something comes in that honesty, 
So I have no regrets about what I wrote. Yes, honey. Some funny airport stories. Oh man, I have more airport stories than I can tell you about. Um, I'll, I'll tell you this though: there was a, one that's not in the book. When I was recently, when I went to Kenya, um, the thing about excuse me, the thing about airports is that um, you know they can be difficult if you're in a wheelchair because if you can imagine, you know, you're on a plane. Up, any, how many people have ever been on a plane? But you notice that the aisles are extremely narrow. So if you're in a wheelchair, you know, you can't walk up and down the aisle. If you have to use the bathroom, um, it can be difficult to do, and you have to put the stewardess or the, the flight attendant through a lot of trouble to get you to the bathroom. So I've had lots of experiences uh, just in airplanes alone. But in going to Africa, which was 36 hours, you know, I, had the, I was in five different airports. I went to Germany. From Germany, I went to Ethiopia. From Ethiopia, I went to Sudan. Sudan to Khartoum, and then Khartoum to finally Kenya. Um, so it, it's kind of funny. I saw the way the airports work in different countries. And like in America, they tend to you in a certain way. Um, you get a lot of kind of uh, wonderful, not I would say wonderful, but you get a lot of good treatment. Um, they kind of understand that uh, there are certain things they have to do. But then as I got closer to like Germany, Africa, um, they started to have less things that I could use and like they started to be they, they didn't even speak the same language as me and what would happen was that these guys instead of having a nice wheelchair that they put in the airline for me like the guy would just pick me up the guy they, 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 and I could they just pick me up and carry me to these different places I need to go to and like I didn't even know the language that they, and they were very kind of rough with me too I'd have to say whoa whoa wait 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 and they would like they, they would talk amongst each other and, uh, and not really talk at me. So they would talk amongst each other. Then they, I, and I would see them. They were saying, grab them here, grab them here, grab them here. That's what they were saying. Then they would just go and grab me. And I have to say, wait, 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 wait. And tell them how I wanted to be grabbed. So that's just, a, that's, I'm, it's going to be in my new book. Like, I, I have a feeling that this is going to be a very similar experience in other airports also throughout the world. But uh, 